Chapter 2 Calling Collab Collaborators and Teachers One of the Brotherhood Speaks Why do we, of the Council of the Ancient Mystical White Brotherhood, wind our way back? We will not have man floundering around in the recesses of darkness when there is an opportunity for us to shed light. Eventually, man must have no darkness in which to hide or scamper into, and we are referring to the darkness of ignorance and superstition. For back and back and back over the treadmill of life man passes until he becomes weary of darkness, of selfishness and ignorance, and calls for enlightenment. We of the Council of the Ancient Mystical White Brotherhood, over eons of time, seek and search and find acceptable teachers, and this does not happen in just a day, week, month, or year. All mankind is destined to serve God. Those who are to serve God in the full measure of divine stewardship are those who have traveled across life's sands many, many times. It is for this reason many have been called, but very few choose to answer that call immediately. All ultimately will and do answer, but it takes time. It is always our desire to keep each individual to a greater degree upon their own independence. It would not be a difficult matter for those of our council to reveal in detail to you how conditions and circumstances here on the mundane sphere of life would eventually come to a climax. It is our desire, moreover, that those whom we choose travel the path without seeing the complete picture, as it were. This results in an incentive for those called to move forward in faith. That soul will get its full reward spiritually. However, when one who has been called, who has chosen to follow the path of love and light, finds the path becoming a trifle darkened, and we can be of assistance, we do shed some ray of light, as it is our duty so to do. We are interested, divinely interested, and for that reason we shall see no shadows cross the path of those called. We shall see no obstacles remain in the path, for he or she who zealously serves God is worthy of every respect and consideration. We are interested in teachers, teachers, and more teachers, and we cannot find them fast enough. The wheat fields are ready to be reaped and thrashed, and the vines are laden with grapes ready to be garnered. We are in need of workers, and there are still many who are running the gauntlet, as it were, of the treadmill of worn-out, threadbare orthodoxy. Step by step we shall lead you. The victor becomes a victor only when he invades the enemy's camp, particularly the enemy's camp within his own thought process. We shall lead you. We read, we read an unfinished scroll, and we know there is much work to be done. In this very hour there are many who are treading along life's path, seeking, knocking, asking. What are they seeking? Light. Whom and where are they seeking? From. God. Upon whose door are they knocking? Upon the door of the inner chamber of their storehouse, where there is plenteous supply of God's substance. Are they to continue to seek, continue to knock? For what are they asking? Release from strife, release from the bondage of mortal chaos. Each one of you has carried a cross, and upon that cross has hung your spiritual body. And in that spiritual body you have kneeled and have called to us, your elder brothers, for assistance, which is always granted. Perchance there be those who have made a choice to follow the path of light and love in service to humankind, and later found through impatience that the road is too long and that the rocks which they have placed in the roads themselves scarred their feet, and they no longer desire to travel that road, but seek another. We of the council never bind. We bind no man of, of earth. Man is only happy when he enjoys the freedom in that which he is doing, just as you enjoy your freedom in that which you are doing now. Should there be any remaining rocks in your path, 
rocks are obstructions of the past, they shall become as dust beneath your feet, and you shall brush them aside quite lightly. Should there be thorns or nettles of the past which have tried your souls, they shall be dissolved, and no longer shall you feel the hurt of their pricks. They shall become an ointment, or as oil of love, for you shall know you are accomplishing another overcoming. Bind not, dear hearts of earth, let man live freely, let man give freely. As in your soul's consciousness, those of you who have accepted the call, so you serve. Should there be those who, on hearing the call and making the choice to serve as unto God, and then, because of some desire or reason of their own, they turn to another road, they shall never, never travel beyond our watchful eye. We do not forsake. We have no locks upon the door of the chamber of the council of the ancient mystical white brotherhood. It is never closed. It stands open, and he who chooses to enter may choose to leave. Do not bind another, and in love you cannot bind. Man, God-man, is free. We desire that you understand fully the immensity of the task which lies before each collaborator. However, it shall not be a task, it shall be a duty performed in love, and the beauty of love shall come forth as you continue in your paths of service. Each one we have chosen to serve with us shall serve after he has made his choice within his inner consciousness to follow the light. Quite often it takes a little time, as you call it, for man of earth to make up his mind as to what he desires to do. When we make a choice, we look beyond the present into that which man of earth calls the future. When progress seems the most retarded, that is the time when the greatest spiritual action is taking place within. We never become involved with mortal confusion. We know nothing of it. We are aware that man lives in a physical havelment and is subject to a degree to the environment of the mortal or physical plane. We do our best to enlighten him as to how he shall rise from that portion of life's pattern he has made of his own choosing. We never attempt to help without knowing that there is an end to man's mortal chaos. All the instructions on the immutable laws or principles that we have endeavored to share with some of our collaborators were given so that they might be broadcast to others and reach those who need it, its lessons and information to solve their mortal chaos. Distress of the physical body is an, uh, is an evidence of accumulated error, but does not by necessity have to remain. It can be overcome. Man of Earth has made this statement, thoughts are things. We say, thoughts become things. Thus man endures for a brief season after he has placed his foot in the right direction upon the road of God's truth and abides by the immutable laws that govern that truth. We have made this statement, let there be a smile in man's voice. First, however, man must learn to smile in his thinking. For man's thinking is evidence in speech, words, deeds, and acts. The Galilean understood this when he said, Man liveth not by bread alone, but by every word which proceedeth forth from the mouth of God. Dear hearts, there is no separation in God, for remember you are within that realm of God. We too are a part of God, therefore do not look upon one with greater favor than the other. Remember, since God is no respecter of persons, neither are we of the council. When we survey the scene, you will find, as the Nazarene, so do we make our choice from what man calls all walks of life. Memory never dies. However, remember this and never forget it. Never disturb the waters where they are placid and cheerful to the eye by looking back into the memories of the past recalling old doubts, fears, unhappy experiences, permitting them to enter your thinking. Never, never look back, not even for a tiny peak.